Hi, in this video we are going to be going over the companion circuits developed by PSIM for the high voltage motor control example projects available in TI's control suite. The full range of circuits available is available on our website, but I'm going to be using the high voltage uh, AC induction motor drive with the sensorless algorithm in this circuit. The folders are available in the example folders of PSIM, or you can download them from the companion page from powersyntech.com. I've already unzipped my folder, and let's go into it. We can see here there's the app note from TI is included, and there are five circuits corresponding with the major build levels from the app note. Uh, we are let's get started with level one here. Inside level one, we see a uh, main circuit and we see two sub circuits inside the sub circuit folder. One is the algorithm and one is a current sensor. Uh, let's launch the main circuit. So we can see the top part here is a representation of the high voltage uh, motor control inverter with the induction motor that comes with the circuit the dev kit. Down in the bottom here we can see some components uh, for the, the F28335 and here we see a PWM generator which is generating the PWM signals for the for the switches in the inverter. We can also see the sub circuit here and we also see the digital output block and a trip zone block. Inside the algorithm circuit we can see that it's actually quite simple as level one in the build uh, order is meant to just verify some independent modules, the duty cycles, and make sure the PWM is working. So that's all that's really needed to start with. The complexity does build up, obviously, with each corresponding build level. And we're using the TI DMC um, control blocks. So these are the same algorithms uh, that uh, the TI DMC library uses. Now we can simulate this, but it's uh, more interesting to generate the code and flash that to a DSP. Uh, the first thing to notice here, and it's very important with all the simulations, is that there are um, notes regarding this V step and this disabled variable start. Um, so when you simulate these circuits, uh, it's different from when you run them with, with Code Composer Studio in the watch window. Uh, with Code Composer Studio or using PSIM's DSP oscilloscope, you can start and stop by changing the state of this variable. In simulation, we have to set that variable from 0 to 1 at some point in the simulation. And we can see here that that happens one millisecond in as we, as we change the state and start the PWM. This, uh, there's a lot of different uh, circuits that need to be started this way. Uh, with regards to closed loops in, in the later levels, but with level one, it's just the start. So to generate the code, all we need to do then is to disable this circuit, get the ground, and enable the start variable. And the notes cover that as well for each simulation. Now we're ready to generate the code. To do that, we we'll go up to simulate and then hit generate code. And here's the code. Here we see the timestamp and the date. So it's uh, when I did this, May 9th, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, and then we need to import this into Code Composer Studio. To do that, open up your version of Code Composer Studio. I'm using the free version here. Uh, select project. And we need to import a legacy Code Composer Studio project. Let's uh, browse to the file. Mine's in instead of temp here, and it was inside the level one circuit. We can see a new a new folder has been made, which is called C code, and inside there we'll find the project file that we're looking for. And then finish. And it gets built. So we can see the, the main C code file here. Uh, developed by SimCoder 9.3.3, .3, 
a tweet through through target and again the date here 9th uh, at 3 p.m. and from here we need to now adjust the uh, the build settings so the device we're going to be using this for is the F28335 so just go down near the bottom here we see it uh, the TMS 320F28335 that's the one we want uh, connection this is for uh, the JTAG, JTAG emulator so um, with some of the dev kits I know it's uh, 100 version 1 I have the uh, the USB emulator 100 version 2 out right now um, and then we just need to delete the linker command okay so that's uh, all ready we can build the project and uh, now we're uh, we're ready to to flash it to, to the DSP. I have one connected, and uh, I'll just hit debug here. So the DSP has been flashed, and uh, it's now in in the pause state. To help us see what's going on, I have a uh, picoscope. Um, if you're not familiar with what this is, it's a little USB oscilloscope, um, and uh, it basically plugs into a uh, USB port of your computer and uh, I've got a couple probes and I've got a, um, a, TI, uh, a, a TI control card plugged into a into a docking board with uh, all the pins exposed. Um, so let's start this and, and see what's going on. Oh right I need to okay so I need to resume so that it's actually running and here we can see that now I can change the value from zero and this needs to be a continuous refresh there it's on zero now I can change this to one and back to uh, zero again let's leave it as one now I've got the pins um, I've got the pins selected but for the PWM outputs, but I'm not I'm not seeing anything, and the reason for that is uh, the trip zone has been tripped uh, because I don't have because I don't have a a three volt source being applied to pin twelve. Uh, the trip zone has been been uh, been enabled. So what I need to do actually is I'm going to recompile this with the trip zone disabled. And uh, and we'll we'll run it again, and, and hopefully we'll see that uh, it's working. So again, go back to generate code. So here we see the new timestamp, 3:17 p.m. And uh, I'll reopen Cocoa Studio. I'll stop this guy. Um, and then we can see that automatically, it the new version of the code has shown up here and then uh, all I got to do is hit debug and away we go again okay so let's get this thing started let's uh, reduce the size of the window a little bit let's pull back the picoscope and let's change this to to one and there we see the picoscope has now picked up the uh, the PDLM signal. Okay, so let's set it uh, to automatically trigger. Let's maybe raise the level up a little bit. And uh, let's okay on channel B. I sh I'll try and find the complement, which I've got it connected to already. So we can see that that's the complement. Um, of what's going on, we can zoom in a little bit if we feel like and see the uh, the dead time. Um, so yeah, everything looks to be working properly. Let's let's back in the watch window. Let's turn this off and put it to zero. And there we go. The PWMs have switched off. So that's how to go over how to. Uh, generate code with the uh, companion uh, schematics for the various levels and how to flash them to the uh, DSP with Code Composer Studio and then to start running the, the actual hardware. Um, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the next videos I'll be going over how to use the DSP oscilloscope utility 
uh, to do the same thing with uh, as Code Composer Studio. So with the DSP oscilloscope utility, we'll be we'll be setting variables to internal process variables to watch, and uh, we'll be setting inputs like start and stop uh, here as well. So uh, check back for the the next video, and uh, thank you so much.